Please help spread the message of Frequency Specific Microcurrent by clicking on the like button. You can subscribe to us on YouTube or any podcast app. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. You can find the podcast transcription at FrequencySpecific.com, as well as more information about Frequency Specific Microcurrent. We, we get to take both of Hi. Ah. Oh, this was great. Did you have fun today? This weekend was the most fun, but this we lost the yeah. news was insane. It was so much fun. I know. It just keeps getting better. And we're talking about it. Is it the right people that are coming? Is it the energy that's just around what we're doing? Well, I'm not sure, but it seems like it ke- keeps getting better. No, that is absolutely. Are we on? Are we on? Can you hear us? Yay. Hi, guys. We don't have people, though. We usually have an audience. Where'd they go? Maybe they went to the bathroom, too. Yeah, I kept them. I kept them moving. They're picking up their purses. She's finished the sports advanced. And this is our once a year podcast in person. Here they come. Here come the people. Hi, guys. Have everybody come. Have the questions. We're, do we have something to read questions that are coming in? Kevin, do we have something to read questions that are coming in? Normally we have something to read our questions. I didn't bring my laptop. Questions from the chat. Now that you mention it, I can fix it. Look on Kevin's face. So here we are in beautiful Arizona. Chandler, Arizona. We did a five day like, tour last week. And then I don't know where to look. I don't know where to look. It's like we look at this. It's screen. Really- yeah, it's sweet. I can look at you, but then I'm not looking at you. I know. But if I look at you on the screen, then there they are. Yes. Five day core last week. And from Wednesday to Sunday, we had 33 people because we had 11 tables. And a quarter of the class was MDs. PTs, massage therapists, acupuncturists, and it's like it keeps getting better. It does. I don't think it it absolutely gets better and better. The questions get better. The energy gets better. The students get better. Everything is just, you get better. Practice. It's all, and it's funny, I think just from somebody who started as a skeptical attendee and I will admit it I wasn't the only one that was skeptical in the group though there was a few of us I remember that were sitting with their arms crossed rolling my eyes when you would get to a certain section I tuned out I checked my social media I'd go to the bathroom for two hours that was like the first 10 years just in case you're wondering And it was no fault to you. And you got it and you knew why we need to know everything. Back in the day, the course started out at two days. Then I went to three, then three and a half. And then, oh, screw it. We'll just do five. I think we went from three and a half straight to five. And what's changed over the years is I used to start with all the published papers, and I used to have to start with proving to everybody that it worked with, what, 90 minutes of published papers? But no, but I understand, again, from my perspective, that is the way to lead because there were people that you needed to convince. Everybody. Right. Why would you believe this, what we're able to do, unless you heard it from somebody that had used it? or a patient, or, right? Yeah, unless you, I think you have that experience of what the heck. And the more good case reports we have and the more good outcomes we have, it is exciting. Uh, Those are the people that we're getting now. Yeah. Yeah, because of, I'd like to say it's because of the published papers, but the truth is it's because they heard about it from either a patient or another practitioner, or they stumbled on the resonance effect, or they stumbled on the podcast. Right. And all I know is whoever's supposed to show up seems to show up. That's funny. I just finished saying that, even with with patients that come into the clinic, it's like, 
why am I getting this patient? Oh, I think it's because I'm supposed to learn something right now. So sometimes I'm learning about patients because you're learning about patients from your patients. It's mm -hmm. because what I've been trying to get better at as an instructor is slowing everybody down. Because when you slow down and you stop the scrubby circles and you listen instead of tell. I like that. And the word that shows up is the word that shows up in capital letters, size 32 <laughs> instead of 24. Century Gothic font. Wait. Wait. Yeah. Just yeah. feel it. Wait. Then move it. And if it gives you two millimeters, take those two millimeters and wait. Right. And then all of a sudden you get another two millimeters. It's funny because I found myself being a little bit hypocritical because at one point as I'm teaching, I'm saying FSM works and it works fast. And so in that context, I was saying, you know, be careful how much you undo if they're not strong enough to stabilize what you've done. And then at the same time, I'm like, slow down. <laughs> it goes fast. So you have to slow down. And they're just like. And what you're talking about is what you learned from the mistakes you made. Yes. So I did this really cool thing and I took all that scar tissue apart and it's a weight. I, the, and I created I'll a massive amount of instability and fix it tomorrow. Here, have some tape. Yeah. Do we have a space tomorrow? I'll stay late. You're going to have to come and back. No weight lifting. To, it'll be fine. Actually, just stay here. <laughs> no, and we laugh about it. But like you said, and I never want to say mistake or I went backwards. So we talked about symbolism. I'm taking this course right now on positive coaching. And we had to pick a symbol and why it was important to us. So my symbol for the year is a grasshopper. No. Oh. Do you know why? Tell me grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> Grasshoppers can only move in one direction and that's forward. Oh, forward and up. It's still forward. They can't go backwards. No, and they can't story. go sideways. They only go forward. Wow. And so I think about that with the mistakes or even with patients, like I went backwards or we're going backwards and we're like, we're not. Sometimes we're staying where we are and sometimes that can be super frustrating. So you're always trying to navigate the progression, right? The safe progression. But even the mistakes are teaching us something. And if the lesson is learned, that's still a forward move in my It's not exactly a mistake. It's a lesson. It's a learning experience. Right. It's what did I learn? I learned to look for tone. Mm -hmm. How did you learn to look for tone? I fixed it the first time by accident. And then once I found out what went away when you ran 81 and 10, mm -hmm. increased secretions in the spinal cord, and the leg got smushy, then I started looking for tight legs. Mm -hmm. And once you look for them and you have a way to fix them, it's a yeah. learning experience. Yeah. And then I wanna go back to the, I don't know, 200 people I saw between 1990s, okay, maybe five, a bunch of people I saw until I f saw 81 and 10 in 2015, right. yeah. And it's, wait, I could fix that now. You know, there, there are so many people that I want to call and be like, yeah. I got it. <laughs> Sorry, you had to wait eight years, but I promise you, I have it now. What was the acronym about FAIL? You, you don't FAIL because FAIL stands first, for First Attempt in learning. learning. Thank you for the acronym. Yeah. Uh, the sports course is all about the acronyms. Yeah. We actually have MWAHAHA, which means movement, warmth, action, heat, movement, warmth, action, heat. Yeah. So MWAHAHA. <laughs> you have to be there. Sounded good. Yeah, yeah, like nefarious. Yeah, no, but that's really cool. Right. So it is about taking what you know, applying it to a patient. Again, it all comes down to that hypothesis. And that is the frustrating part that about this course. And it's really frustrating about teaching it and getting those questions of how long do you run it? And how do you know when to go off of it? And, and the answer is, you tell me. The patient tells you. The tissue tells you. Fingers will tell you. And everybody, when they learn to cook, wants a recipe that they can follow. And they don't want to make a mistake. Yeah. Mistakes are bad. How many minutes do I run it? 
I had an MD PhD that took the course in 2001, maybe 2002, when I really didn't know what I was doing about teaching. And he was very much about, okay, how many minutes? And he's an MD PhD internist. Yeah. He doesn't know feel for smush and that's how you know. Right. So when you learn to cook though, you want a recipe that you can follow. It's a half a teaspoon of this and a cup of that and a quarter teaspoon. And yeah, what is a pinch? Okay, right, pinch. And then once you learn to cook, you needs oregano. What do you think? Oregano? And you grab some oregano. Okay, it's oregano. And then you have to. Oh, okay, that's better. Doesn't taste right. There's something missing. So the other day when I was, we had a patient, a practitioner who was a student in the five-day core, and she had gone over the handlebars on a mountain bike downhill at about 30 miles an hour and completely tore up. They had to wait eight hours for plastics and reconstructive to get there to sew up her face. So that's the laceration she had that went down her mouth, across inside her jaw. And her complaint was TMJ, the practitioners working on her dutifully looked up the TMJ slide and they were running 124 and 77 for the pterygoids. And I got over there 20 minutes after they'd been running 124 and 77, torn and broken in the connective tissue in the pterygoids. And she had maybe a finger and a half opening. And I said, so tell me what happened. Then I saw the scar. And then she described that they had to sew her lower lip back. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. On to her gums back there. What's there here? Periodontal ligament. So we did torn and broken in the periodontal ligament. And this accident was five years ago. It was a while ago. So it's all well healed. And torn and broken in the periodontal ligament. Now we have two, two and a half inches. And then she described the rest of the trauma. And I felt under here, and it was really stiff. So if you're listening on the podcast, you're palpating under oh, yeah. the jawline. So Those of you that are li yeah. listening and not watching. From behind her ears, under her jaw, under her chin. And it's like a rock. Right. That doesn't prevent her from opening the jaw, but this should not be rock-like. Mm -hmm. This should, you should be able to move things. What runs under here? So I ran, that's the oregano. I ran scarring in the vagus. That's no place on the recipe, but it's the nerve that runs from behind her ear, clear down her throat. And if it's scarred, and it runs all inside the mouth, mm -hmm. comes from behind the ear, into the palate, into the gum, mm -hmm. and under the tongue. And we're getting quite a I mean, question. Oh, uh, Kevin figured, I knew he would. And when we ran scarring in the Vegas, we got three fingers of movement and she could stick her tongue out. Right. Because the fibers of the vagus are all inside the mouth, the salivary glands, the gum, the tongue, the palate, all right. of that. Yeah. So right. that's the mileage part. It, so the new challenge for me as I'm learning to teach this is giving enough ingredients, my list of ingredients without being too overwhelming with that list of ingredients, right. keeping the directions simple. Right. But creating enough hope that you're going to make the most amazing souffle or beef wellington 
that you could ever dream possible because it's possible, right? Mm -hmm. But it's okay to have a very basic sandwich too. I love the conversation you had yesterday about what five conditions would you take with you to a desert island and what eight tissues would you take? Okay, again, you're in my brain at all the best times possible. Oh, sitting, yeah. So you're we're really like downloading yeah. off each other right uh -huh. now. And that's the thing we have, you come to the sports course, you get a laminate, you come to the court, you get a laminate, you come to the advanced, you get five laminates. So the, you end up having thousands of frequency combination pairs and it can be extremely overwhelming. It's so, a spice cabinet where you can't see the stuff that's in the back row unless you put it on a turn. Spice cabinet. It's one of those weird spice world stores where you're just like, where did this even come from and how do I even use it? But I think I always try to say like you have you know, for scarring, for instance, like there's six frequencies right off the top of my head I can think of that can help with something that is tight and or adhered and or hard and or calcified, all that stuff. But if I'm on an island and I'm only allowed to pick five A channels, what am I going to pick for scarring? That's going to be 13. 13. I get the most bang for my buck when I run 13. However, I am aware that so this is my Himalayan rock salt, right? This is my 13. But I am aware that there's table salt and kosher salt and hickory smoke salt. And there's different salts if I want to increase salt. Garlic salt. salt. There's garlic salt, right? Yeah. I think that's the challenge is not limiting people. Because for me, I want them to think about what's wrong. I don't want to limit them into thinking it's just scarred. Because it's not just scarred or adhered. And then... It gets worse than that because... <laughs> so why is it scarred and adhered? Yeah, there's the why is it scarred and adhered. And then it's really easy to think that the lady that couldn't open her jaw beyond that, that the problem was scarring mm -hmm. in right. the connective tissue, the muscle, the fascia, mm -hmm. when what makes it relax is torn and broken. Okay, so let's talk about that because things don't get in very rare cases because things absolutely can do. And we talked about this a couple hours ago, but for the most part, I think we can all agree that things get scarred because they tear. Fair enough, yeah. With FSM, if we go under the principle that we're always trying to find the driver, right. we're always trying to figure out it's yes, it's what's wrong and where is it occurring, but now we really capitalize on what's wrong. Okay, how did it get like that? Why is it scarred? What are the clues? What are the clues? Follow the breadcrumbs. So it becomes complicated, but it doesn't because I think we should always be thinking even before FSM, like why is the shoulder like that? Why is it stopping here? I don't know, it just stops. And I think we become lazy sometimes with our approach because, and again, we see this so often with the glenohumeral joint. Mm. Patients come in with pain in the shoulder. They come in pain, they point to the anterior shoulder and they're like, it hurts here. And everybody looks there and injects there and ice is there. And it's hurting there because it's torn and broken and overworked and fatigued because the scapula can't move. So it's the most basic example I can think of. Unless it's a four or five disc and what's hurting here is the C4 nerve root. So two different approaches, both of them have nothing to do with the glenohumeral joint. Yeah. The glenohumeral joint doesn't hurt because it just decides to one day. Yeah. And the thing that gives, especially new students hope when they leave completely overwhelmed is that one slide that says, oh, just dive in. You can't hurt anybody. And you will learn how to do this by working on people because the frequencies are so reproducible. And doing the basics from the recipe card, you can help 50, 60% of what walks in the door. Right. And for those people, the 50 or 60% that walk in the door, you are a miracle worker. Mm. It's, I have had this for X years and nobody has been able to fix it. And you made all this huge difference in 45, 45 minutes. minutes. We both said 45 minutes. You come in, you get treated, and then you have a <laughs> in 45. Yeah. 
Ah, this is spooky. <laughs> but the, yeah, the, the, the point of it is, I think, and we're talking very much on a practitioner level because we're here and we're teaching everybody right now, but for the patients that are experiencing it, sometimes, yeah, you will have a practitioner that kind of bounces around with frequencies and a hypothesis. And it's not that they don't know what they're doing. It's that there are a lot of options and they're trying to provide you with the best possible outcome. And sometimes like I was explaining today, it takes time. It's not my timeline. It's not what the textbook tells me how long a tendon heals timeline. It's not the patient's perceived idea of how long they have to do this. You have to respect the timeline of the tissue. And that's why there's not a recipe card that says we'll run 124 and 77 for 18 minutes. Yeah. And then you do this and you fix or not fix 20 or 30% of it improves, but then you have this left. What's left is not the same as the 20 or 30% that you fix. So now you have a new recipe. What is this that's left? And why did this show up after that changed? And then that's when your brain explodes and you phone a friend because it can be that part of the treatment where it completely throws you for a total loop. Or sometimes the patient has like a douse of truth serum and they're like, oh, when there's 10 minutes left in the treatment. I totally forgot to tell you about this story where I fell flat on the pool and I knocked myself unconscious and my back hurt for two weeks. And did I mention the part where I fell through the floor as a fireman and landed on my head with all my gear on my back? I forgot about that. Maybe right. that's why my neck hurts. Total sidestep. What is it about having an FSM treatment that is like truth serum? Cannabinoids and endorphins. And I suspect tissue memory, maybe a, co a combination. So they measured the endorphins. So we know that the endorphins go up by 10 times. And there's this time distortion feature of patients getting dwarfed mm -hmm. that is characteristic of cannabinoids, right? And when you loosen up the latches on the doors of the cortex or the subconscious when you thin that veil out and the patient all of a sudden remembers as you're dealing with this tissue the memory maybe of the trauma that's stored in that tissue comes leaking out of the hippocampus now that the cortex guards are not watching it. The gatekeeper. Yeah. The gatekeeper. Yeah. And gatekeeper it... is stoned. <laughs> and the tissue memory of, remember that time that... And I'm not talking about like the story, because it, it absolutely is true. Like they'll tell you stories and personal stories and all these stories. And that absolutely does happen when a patient feels safe. And if you've seen somebody for a long period of time, I'm talking about what you just described. Oh, by the way, I it's funny, I forgot about this. I had this tear, that tear. And, it's, and it is, it's instant, it's during treatment. And what's that book? The, is it the Body Keeps the Score or something like that? They something talk about like stored, that, yeah. stored trauma. It's super interesting. Uh, and, and it happens very frequently. It's like true serum. <laughs> and if only I could hook up my teenagers and have the same effect, and ask them, do you have a boyfriend? But it doesn't quite work. No, like no. <laughs> the answer is always Maybe no. that's why our children don't let us treat them. No, we have a couple questions. I have a question. Let's try to get to them. I had posted a question online. A friend is in surgery right now getting a knee replacement. He has cancer. Where? What should I do or avoid doing? He started with pro whoa, prostate cancer with bone mats. Whoa. He is doing remarkably well. So Surprising his oncologist, mostly doing natural therapies, treat the bone mats. What Harry did was concussion protocol, support the adrenals, mats to protocol from the advance to treat the pain. You don't want to treat the prostate. Nope. 
uh, if he had radiation for the prostate, you can treat the scarring caused by the radiation. Yeah, that, uh, you, you're not going to treat the cancer. So Harry would do concussion, emotional factors. He would adjust the spine because he was a European trained osteopath and immune system. And for us, because we have a pro protocol from the advance, it's really good for bone mats and bone mats, it's hard to keep the pain down. Is the knee replacement because of the bone mats or hmm. did they need the knee replacement anyway? Or is the knee needing replacement because the bone mats just happen to be in the distal end of the femur and there's that. It's those little details that. Um, the little details with FSM become the important pivotal details. And for patients that are, are listening, there's never a detail that is too small. So somebody will always say, I don't know if this is relevant, but oh, I love it oh the that. fact that you're saying, I'm not sure if this is relevant means it's like more relevant than you could ever imagine it being relevant, right? Yeah. Speaking of which, just so every practitioner listening, I just I have to tell you what happened yesterday. Let's do it. That's why so we're here. I have these three days off while you teach the sports. And I agreed to see a patient yesterday in the lobby who had tracked me down on the email. And he described something and I answered and he said, I don't actually understand what you said. I didn't realize I had a traumatic brain injury. How does somebody have a... Anyway, so I agreed to meet him at one o'clock and he told me the mechanism of action and I watched his eyes move. And I said, how do you feel about going into Costco? Oh, I can't go into Costco. He listed the number of people that have treated him with different things. I started to get better, and then I had this treatment, and I was symptom-free for six weeks. And then I had that treatment, and I got knocked for a loop for 18 months. And so this has been 10 years, and he's seen neurologists and GPs and all of that. And I said, you hate going into Costco keep your head straight forward, follow my finger with your eyes. And his eyes are bouncing all over the place. And right there in the lobby of the hotel, back in the corner, because he's very sound sensitive in one ear, I explained about vestibular injuries mm. and that he had one. And this is what you do. And he said, and I have this terrible head pain from the head injury is the pain going through your right eye? He said, yeah, it feels like it's just a poker in my eye. Mm -hmm. That's coming from your neck. There's no way to have the kind of fall you had without jamming these two joints. And those two joints are where your pain is coming from. And that's different from the fact that you feel woozy and you get anxious in Costco. So in basically an hour and a half, without ever touching him, except for the follow my finger with your eyes, he said, why don't more people know about this? Right. And I said, everybody that's ever taken my class, they learn 45 minutes of this because of four three, four physicians that I worked with that taught me about vestibular injuries and then all the patients. So in that 90 minutes, I changed that guy's life with without ever touching him. So some of what happens in the core is just what you know that nobody else knows. Yeah, you're right. And so there's that part of it. Then there's the FSM part. Mm -hmm. which is the tool that lets you do what nobody else can do. To me, you just said the most important part, right? FSM is not about devices. It's not about frequency. It's about how to use it and where to look for it. 
So I think maybe that's why I know that's why my sports class keeps growing is because I'm like, okay, they have to treat this. Oh, but I have to show them how to look for it. And these are the skills and these are the questions and these are the tools that I do that have got me to this point. Do you want me to tell you the bad news? Okay. (laughs) How long do you think you're going to be able to keep the sports course at two days? They're going to be like two 20 hour days. Wouldn't be two eight hour days. I think it's just not that's why there is a sports advance. And now the sports advance needs to be two days. And then I don't know. So I get it. I get it why the core is five days now. I feel so validated. Thank you very much. It's that's how where I ended up at five days. And, and the more I practice, the more I'm like, oh, I gotta put that in the course, or I have to tell people about this because and I think that's what I really love about our community so much is the willingness to share stories and to help each other out. And do you know what I mean? There's no ego. There's nothing proprietary about what anybody's doing. We're all just genuinely doing this for the greater good of our patients and for the greater good of the practitioners. We also want to help each other. I just love this community. I know. It's like we've created this big family. So I'm sitting there in the lobby today eating breakfast, lunch, chicken wings with barbecue sauce on them. I didn't get to dip them. So I've got this chicken wing in this mouth, in my mouth, and I've got barbecue sauce on my face and my fingers. And this very nice lady walks up to me and I said, oh, and she told me she, where she was from and when she took the course. And she said, remember you treated my RSD? And I went to myself, no, I have absolutely no recollection of that. <laughs> that was last year, the year before, whatever. And I said, oh, I'm so glad I got better. She said, now RSD patients are coming to me and they're so easy to fix. Wow. And you you look around for lightning. <laughs> Who on the planet says, RSD oh, it's just RSD. It's come on. Yeah, but that was my face when I was at my first core and you're like, nerve pain is going to be one of the easiest things you have to treat. And I'm like, and I'm <laughs> I'm looking around. I'm like, did you guys hear what she just said? Nerve pain is the hardest thing that anybody has to treat. But then you treat it with FSM. And it is one of the, when somebody comes in, yeah, I've got this nerve pain. I'm like, oh, thank you for giving me somebody easy today. And yeah, they look at you like, but nobody's been able to fix this. Give me 45 minutes. Give me a pinwheel. Give me a couple of machines. And we got this. And then you, and what is it with food analogies? Okay. I know everyone's just like, all my things, jello, lasagnas. Discs, cervical, sp- spinal discs are jelly donuts. Mm-hmm. And the donut part is 14 layers this way. And the jelly is very inflammatory. And you push on the, f- once you make it into a jelly donut, people can see it. Yeah. You can conceptualize. And the lasagna go- thing. Because the body is layered. And so you got the noodle and you've got the muscle and the fascia and the connective tissue and the cheese. 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 Sometimes you've got ricotta cheese and mozzarella and there's different cheese. So there's different layers of fascia. And then there's some of them that have sausage and hamburger in them. And those are both different. Some are vegetarian. It's about options and thinking about, for, for me, like the lasagna just stands for there's layers. And so one of the important part of, of the layer concept is the psoas and everybody in sports performance and sports therapists love treating the psoas. And I'm not saying the psoas doesn't need to be treated. I'm just saying the psoas is very deep and you're silly thinking you're going to be able to access it by just pushing here. You have to think of all the layers that are on top of the psoas. One of my favorites is the omentum. I love the omentum. Adipose, the multiple organs that are on top of the psoas. The psoas attaches onto the anterior portion of the sacrum. When I'm putting my fingers on somebody, I am not accessing their psoas. Isn't that also on the, it's on the, Femur. And on the inside, oh, okay, the lesser trochanter of the femur. But I'm saying there's very deep attachment. Oh, the iliacus. Yeah, sure. sorry, I'm, I'm bouncing around. Yeah. 
we have this very deep muscle that everybody loves to treat because we think it's the culprit and sometimes it is. But if we can just sit back for a moment and think, we have multiple organs, the omentum. We always talk about scarring in the ureter. So the fallopian tubes. So when I bring out that slide that has all these utensils in which to smush your psoas or to release your psoas, I think about what are you traumatizing on top of all those noodles and all the cheese that is on top of that bottom noodle, which is mm. the psoas. And if there is a way to melt those layers and release the adhesions without creating more pressure, which could create more scarring, which could create more bleed. pain, bleeding. The layer analogy is, I think, a very, or the lasagna or the food is a very helpful tool. And that's how I explain it to patients who think, I just want you to press really hard and release it. I'm not your girl. I'm sorry. You can go somewhere else for press real hard. I can release it and not press hard. How about mm -hmm. them apples? I had one this week. Okay. So you know how I went the psoas and the ureter. So you come off the rectus abdominis, you fall into that groove before you get to the obliques, and there's a psoas. And the psoas was really tight. If the psoas is really tight, and it's the ureter, mm -hmm. which it's like 80% of the time, 90% of the time, it's the ureter. It's really sore. Mm -hmm. It's ow. And I put my hands on it and it was just really tight. And her right pelvis was torqued mm -hmm. up. So the right psoas, the right pelvis is twisted. And She's very athletic, works out. And then I reached down and touched her leg. That's tone. Would you mind if I tried something? Because the team at the table was... So I just took a washcloth from there and put a washcloth under her foot. And we ran increased secretions in the spinal cord. And the leg softened up. And it goes up the front. And then the psoas just lengthened and her pelvis went that way. And I asked her, when did you hurt your neck? I, what? I said, this thing it, in your leg, when did you start having trouble running? Hmm. And she described something she was doing with weights. Mm. That was a surprise to me. The psoas is always the ureter, really. I the, then the kidney, and then the whole pelvis goes smush, and they're a hero, and it's easy. And and, and that, then it go on. Eighty one and ten. And that's not to say that you can't go and and treat the psoas later, or and it's going to have to learn how to activate. And that is my favorite part of the story. And now that it's longer. It has no idea what to do with her hip or her trunk because it's always been short and tight. Now that it's long, it's weak and stupid. But <laughs> ignorant, that's a better word. Yeah, I, I just think that they're offline, right? There's just no way that you're going to recruit a muscle that is adhered or is going to be the primary mover in hurting a joint. So when there's like a bone spur, for instance, or calcification or some, we talk about hip impingement. So if there's a bony overgrowth on the femoral neck or on the acetabulum, we're not going to get recruitment to that area because it's going to hurt. So when you remove the pathology, sometimes it takes a little bit. So if there's scarring in the ureter or whatever there is, it takes a bit to get that muscle online confidently. And there comes our favorite superhero 40 and 89 to save the day to say, you know what? I get it. You were terrified of doing this. It's going to be fine. But what you were scared of is gone. So you can come out from underneath the bed again. So that's my favorite part. And then once the hippocampus and the thalamus are under the bed, then you get the cerebellum to say, come here, I got something for you. I haven't talked to him in a really long time, <laughs> right. but come get this. You just stay under the bed and you run in. 
And this is something I've started doing in the core. Ask the people that whose brains are oozing out of their skull this week. <laughs> Early on, it's after you do this, then you coordinate it with the central nervous system. And this is before we've even covered any of the central nervous system. All those poor people. I know it's cruel, but they understand the concept. Right. And then I turn it into frequencies, but everybody knows that your arm doesn't move on its own. Right. There's a nerve, there's a spinal cord, it goes to the cerebellum, it starts in the sensory cortex, it goes like that. Yeah. At least I hope everybody knows that. I, I would imagine yeah. that's a yeah. reasonable expectation. <sighs> it's so nice to be in Phoenix. Let's grab another question just so we can make sure that they're being answered because we love when people take the time to text us. Occasional swollen tissue behind the cervical spine. Is it lymph? Nope. Nope. The lymphatics in the C-spine are in the front. When I look at the lymphatics, there's not a whole lot that goes down the back. It all goes, it drains yeah. from down the front. I'm not live, sure what- Live studio audience, anybody have anything to- Swollen means, yeah. But swollen how? Is it, is it just an enlarged two, three, three, four facet? I don't know. Can it be related to spinal inflammation? My vote would be- spinal inflammation and joint adhesions. Mm -hmm. All right, I think a client with a pacemaker defibrillator says that his heart rot problem arises from scar tissue in the cardiac septum from childhood. He's at wit's end as asking whether FSM might be effective and whether it would be safe. I've seen comments in the Facebook group regarding being able to safely treat clients with pacemakers, defibrillators, using the converter. That's a really complicated, that's way more cardiology than most of us have to deal with. His heart problem. So if he has a pacemaker defibrillator means that either he comes in and out of ventricular tachycardia, actually yeah, because the cardiac septum is between the ventricles, right? The atrium has a little thin separation. He's at his wit's end. Why? I was wondering if there's a different part to that. Like, I didn't, I don't understand. Why is he at his wit's end? If you're still online, add what he's on his wit's end about. Yes, because when you're, when you have a risk of ventricular tachycardia. They put you on beta blockers. You get sleepy. Mm -hmm. Those particular drugs are not much fun. Right. Most of the side effects come from the statins that they also put you on, whether you need them or not. But then should you happen to have an episode where you escape the medication, that's why you have a defibrillator. Is he wanting to, you can treat patients who have pacemakers. Right. If that's the question, that patient's easy. Yeah. That answer is easy. You treat above the clavicle and below the waist. Right. That's straightforward. But if you're asking, can I get rid of the scar tissue in the septum that's causing the left bundle branch block or the right bundle branch block or the arrhythmia Whoa. At night, his pulse increases to over 160, causing the defibrillator to fire. He'd like to try and treat the cause, the scar tissue, and the heart. Well, since the major side effect of beta blockers is, unless it's atrial fib, so is it ventricular tachycardia or atrial fib? If it's ventricular tachycardia, there are long acting meds that he takes before he goes to bed that just sit on his heart rate. But yeah, having your defibrillator fire hurts and does tend to wake you up. You wow. also should have a sleep study 
because if your heart rate goes to 160, there's a pretty good chance you've got sleep apnea. And I really don't care if you don't like the little mass cannula thing. I'm not a good person to talk about sleep apnea because I'm not very sympathetic. You are. And now when it comes to sleep apnea. We just need to sleep. Sleep is the most important component. And sleep apnea, when you stop, my tachycardia is vagus related and it's okay. Oh, goody answers. I'm glad you're listening. Thank you for helping us out here. It is ventricular tach. And with meds, it's not being managed. Okay. So if it's vagus related, then I think that maybe somebody else who's asked who's, oh, no. maybe not. I'm not I'm oh, sure. Is this, I think this might be different than it's sure. different than that one. Yeah. Oh, that's Kevin was passing it on from somebody else. Dana, are you the one? Oh, you're someone else in yeah. the chat. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So her tachycardia is Vegas related. Not the person who. Had and it. so you run increased secretions in the vagus in a long vagus tone protocol that you run at night. Yeah. Cardiac stuff is not our specialty and treating things that get people dead makes me nervous. Rightfully, let's turn this boat around. Moving this. Yes. I was going to say on the sports and you heard me talk about this before. We always talk about if you're on an island yeah, and I get to take my custom care. Okay. But I can only load five frequencies on A. I'm going to shorten this. I'm going to say three. Ah! Making you do it. Three? You only take three A channels with you. Okay. What's your first? 40. Okay. And number two? 13. And number? Oh, I have to have four. 81 and 124. Yeah, I know, right? It's I had like, a really like, time like, between those two. You, know, you have to give it at least five. And my 81, I was also fluctuating between 49. Because it's oh, like, yeah. sometimes you don't want so much 81. You just want a little 49. But sometimes or a lot of 49. Yeah, but sometimes the 49 works. You're just like, now I have to do 81. Yeah. Okay. Well, For those of you that don't let's have talk about list. this. Okay. So our very first was 40 quiet the activity of or decrease the inflammation of. We always need to have that in our toolkit. Number two was 13. 13. Helps with scar tissue, helps with adhesions because we're on the island and we're going to need to fix that. Number three was a toss up between 49 and 81 yeah. because we need to increase the vitality in the secretions to something or the Whatever. activity of, right? And then number four was torn and broken because we're definitely going to tear and break things on the island. And being torn and broken causes inflammation and that eventually causes scarring is whatever got torn and broken healed. And so you relieve the scarring, but then you have to give it vitality to get back to work. That's five. So note to self, never go to a desert island without at least five, five channel A's. I feel like you were probably that kid when someone asked you if you could have three wishes, what would you wish for? More wishes would be like your, yes, I only said three and we are getting yeah. out of here at five. No, I have a physical therapy clinic that bought a blue box way back in the day. So they had a, the PTs that had been trained, but then they had technicians that were using the old precision micro out on the floor. And so they had a three by five card maybe six or eight channel A frequencies on the card. Mm -hmm. And they had nerve, fascia, artery, connective tissue, tendon, bursa, and periosteum on the right. Yeah. And they had it on well, two yeah. three by five index cards, mm -hmm. scotch tape to the top of the machine. Yeah. That would work. Yeah, sometimes you just need, I'm not so <laughs> hypocritical because this is not about the quick recipe of how to make a grilled cheese sandwich, which by the way, are delicious sandwiches. I love grilled cheese sandwiches. Because, but then you can put the turkey in and then sometimes you want a hey. coconut oil and then you're gonna need to dip, dip it in your tomato soup. <laughs> and so it's getting close to dinner, but well, okay. So those were our eight channels and now you gotta pick. But it, you're on a desert island. Yeah. You have to have 18 and 62. That's a frequency to stop bleeding. And there's that. So now there's five or six. Yeah. So channel B, if you're going to have 
18, you've, you've got to have 62, 62, which is the artery and the muscle belly, right? connective had, tissue. Right, 77. If we had 40 and 81, then we definitely need 10. Yeah. And the cord. Yeah, uh, spinal cord and the nerve. 96. I'm also going to be terrified, so I might need 89. <laughs> Yeah, on the I'm island terrified they're, they're they're stuck on a desert island with a, a therapist that's got this box with six batteries and instead of getting food we just want to connect somebody and yeah and hook them up oh after we feed them after we feed them yeah so that's how it is right i think that is always a train of thought is start with what makes sense what is your hypothesis where do you think you're going to get the most benefit from but be unattached to the hypothesis enough that you can pivot or adapt or however we phrase it in case it's not working. Oh. And those of you that cook, once you've made the same recipe five or six times, is there anybody that follows the recipe exactly? Yeah, that is definitely not enough cinnamon. It mm -hmm. says a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm kidding. So you put two teaspoons of cinnamon in it. And so it's that way with FSM. You start with the basics and you can do so much. Yeah. But then as you get more adept and more practice, you you expand your, expand. your spice cabinet. Yeah. Which is what the advanced is about. But just as fair warning to everybody that's coming, I changed it this year. And then I invited too many speakers because we have three days. And so I said yes to everybody that offered to speak. And I asked about to be. And then I forgot the case reports. So that took care of Sunday morning. So I still have only two mornings. And yeah, so there's that. So the last food analogy that I'm going to make today okay. is like your preparation for this is like I'm sure going to your house and making sure that you're the person that's like, there's not going to be enough food. And then there's so much food that you're eating the same meal for days and days because you never want to run out of food when you have company coming over. So that is what the advance has turned to. Like, I don't want to have a lack of knowledge or a lack of presenters or a lack of case studies or a lack of content when all these people are coming to my house for dinner. And I'm Italian. And there's that. <laughs> So, so it's like a double whammy. So you, like you have no choice but to be, eat, learn. We have practitioners from all over the U.S., yeah. and Canada, world, like and Ireland, uh, Rome, right? Belgium. Uh, oh, Belgium. Chile. I have to meet the lady from Belgium. Chile. Someone Chile. Chile. There's somebody here from Chile that I haven't met yet. Yeah. The lady from Belgium I haven't met yet. And so it's That's like amazing. having a big family reunion. Yeah our favorite two weeks of the year the family reunion where you actually like all the family members <laughs> and you're excited to hang with them exactly yeah so there's that i didn't think this hour could be faster well, but it did. is absolutely faster than we are in person yeah did we make any sense at all i don't know <laughs> we had people in the sports class just talking about like how great the podcast is and i'm like oh it's so valuable i learned something every time i listen i'm like well, that really makes me feel good because sometimes as like I click off my computer, I'm like, what did we just talk about? What did we talk about, I know I was muting myself because my dog was barking and all these things were happening, but I hope that all made sense. And it helps that maybe everybody that we're talking to is ADD as we are. Oh, because right, maybe. if you put a GPS on this conversation, it would definitely not do that. There's no linear. No, it's like one of those... How did they get there? And then they, well, it made sense to us. Right. It's, we had to go exploring. Exactly. You just follow, what did you call it? Follow, follow the, the bread breadcrumbs. Crumbs. I suspect that's going to be the title of this one. No, following the breadcrumbs. Maybe. All well, right. Kevin thinks up the titles. And we have David Eakes here. Hi, David. Hey. And hi, everybody. I'm Kevin. And hi, everybody. All right. And everybody watching us, whenever you're watching us, thanks for watching and listening and all the things. And we'll see you next time. Are we going to be here next week? We are. <laughs> we both said that at the same time. What do we have to do something like this? I won't do that. Yeah. Okay. See you next week. 
The Frequency Specific Microcurrent Podcast has been produced by Frequency Specific Seminars for entertainment, educational, and information purposes only. The information and opinions provided in the podcast are not medical advice, do not create any type of po- doctor-patient relationship, and unless expressly stated, do not reflect the opinions of its affiliates, subsidiaries, or sponsors, or the hosts, or any of the podcast guests or affiliated professional organizations. No person should act or refrain from acting on the basis of the content provided in any podcast without first seeking appropriate medical advice and counseling. No information provided in any podcast should be used as a substitute for personalized medical advice and counseling. FSS expressly disclaims any and all liability relating to any actions taken or not taken based on or any contents of this podcast.